Today I have some good friends and family members coming from out of state. I had been through some things, kind of a journey in my life over the last few years, and these family and friends are the people who have really been close beside me down that whole road and uh, have really helped me get through all that. And so this is a celebration of where we are now. One of the things that I had always been, uh, I guess, proud of and, and enjoyed was being healthy and physically fit and able to do things. I went from being extremely healthy to being extremely sick in about 48 hours. My name is Walter, and I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia, or AML. This party for Walter is the most amazing thing to me, to see him surrounded by his most important medical caregivers. I'm so happy to have my medical team here. He has had support from his friends, his family, his co-workers. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. This journey has been a classic roller coaster. Uh, my sister and I were at my mother's taking care of her in hospice when we found out that Walter had been admitted for chemo at Moffitt. And I had been asked to call my brothers and notify them that they needed to come home to be with mom. And Walter emailed and said, I can't come. I've been diagnosed with leukemia and I'm starting chemo tomorrow. In the beginning, it was November of 2014 and I was kind of feeling more tired than usual. Simplistically, general symptoms are I'm tired, I'm short of breath, again, fever, sometimes fevers at nighttime, um, drenching night sweats at nighttime, this sort of, um, you know, e e easy bleed bleedability, such as my gums are bleeding when I'm, you know, brushing my teeth, nose bleeds, uh, things like that are pretty common parts of a presentation for patients with acute myeloid leukemia. But we went through all the tests and all the different labs and everything, and at the end of the day, he said, there's some things that we need to talk about. And I said, okay. And he said, uh, your lab work is highly suggestive of leukemia. And I think that's about the last thing I heard him say. Because one of the things it has occurred to me is nobody goes to a physical exam expecting to get the question, do you have an oncologist? No, I don't. Nobody does. I think when, when people hear acute leukemia, obviously they, they know that's a serious diagnosis. There's basically two main types. One is acute lymphoblastic leukemia, one is acute myeloid leukemia. This just is in reference to the type of cells. So leuk essentially means white or white blood cell, and, and acute myeloid leukemia would be of the myeloid origin, which is a predominance of, of different type of white cells, especially our white cells that, uh, that fight infection, et cetera. This is also our factory for making all of our cells. So it's not just our ability to fight infection, but it's our ability to make red blood cells, which is our oxygen cells or energy cells, as well as our platelets, which help us um, stopping or, or preventing bleeding. So it's really our factory for, for making all the cells that we need to live, which is where this cancer um, initiates from. I think sometimes the diagnosis can be extremely easy. I think when a patient presents and they have 90% blast, you know, circulating cells, you know, a, one of our laboratory technicians in, in, in minutes could say, hey, you know, very clearly, this is an acute leukemia. So it is fatal if left untreated. You know, you know, for a while, particularly in patients with older AML, we, we almost had no therapies. And, and the average survival without treatment is gonna be in the weeks to months.
was extremely sick when I was first diagnosed, and I went through some very intensive chemotherapy for a week, and then I had to go back for another week. And so the, the, the chemo doesn't make you feel good. It makes you sick. My hair fell out three times, and so it's, uh, it's a hard journey. I had my initial treatment, got out of the hospital after a month, and then a few weeks later I had one more week of treatment, and I was considered in remission and basically uh, on my way. Six months later, I relapsed. I kept getting sicker and sicker. And at the time, we were not as closely involved in his care, but once he relapsed, our brother Paul and myself became deeply involved. We do things as a family, and when somebody needs help, that's an all call. We all show up. So unfortunately, AML relapse is quite common. In the elderly setting, essentially nearly all patients relapse at some point. Now, we're thinking maybe there's a small percentage, 5 10% that don't, but that's an extreme minority. In our younger fit patients, again, it really depends what their treatment plan is, what their underlying mutations are, but probably at least 50% of patients overall are relapsing, if not higher. It's a really a major issue, and trying to prevent that from happening is, is a huge effort uh, from the clinical trial community. My hematologist showed me the email from the pathologist, and his note said, highly suggestive of relapsed AML, which was devastating. So at that point, my hematologist told me, if you don't choose transplant now, there's almost no reason to treat you because your disease is aggressive. You relapsed in only six months. If you go with chemo only again, you will relapse even sooner. And every time you relapse, it's harder to get you back. So at that point, I agreed to enter the process for the bone marrow transplant. For most patients, cure um, is hand in hand with ultimately going forward with an allogeneic stem cell or bone marrow transplant. We often try to get them in a great remission and then bridge them to allogeneic stem cell transplant where um, you know cure can occur in patients. And so by then, it's about Thanksgiving of 2015. I was at home and I was out in my front yard working on some things, and my uh, cell phone rang. And I looked at the phone, and it was the cancer center phone number. So I answered the phone, and it was the transplant nurse. And she said, we found your donor. That was my greatest Christmas present ever. It's great to meet all of you. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I obviously couldn't have asked for a better outcome um, when I decided to to volunteer and donate my stem cells. So great to you know have this experience and to meet all of you. Alexa is the gift of time to our family. We, we would not probably still have Walter with us if it had not been for Alexa. And we will just be eternally grateful to her for her gift of more time with our brother. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. had a sarcoma form on my spine, between my spinal cord and my right kidney that had to be radiated to get rid of it. And actually since that time, you know, he's been on um, sort of a maintenance therapy to help prevent relapse for actually now five years. And this whole journey has about been a 10 year time frame, and he's doing beautifully. If I fast forward to now, which is another five years, and my bone marrow has stayed in remission. I would say, you know, as I entered the field, you know, a decade ago, you know, there was essentially two therapies and literally no major advance in drug development, um, you know, in multiple decades. So really in this past, you know, five years plus, we, we've had an amazing amount of new approvals. We are having new approvals every year. 
it's an exciting time, but again, this is still a very tough disease and a very challenging course for many patients. Crowned queen. So I've gotten to know Alexa over the years. She has been uh, a real, almost like a new family member for everyone. So it's been a really interesting experience to have somebody who not only have we welcomed her and our family, she has enjoyed joining us. So it's been a really good relationship for several years now. So what this reminds me of is more than anything, how blessed I am. The family I have and the health I have is just such a blessing to me. And that's what I'm so thankful for.